They believed they knew where they came from. Ancient epics whispered of divine ancestors. Stone temples and sacred rivers carried memories older than recorded time. For thousands of years, the story of the Indian people felt complete, passed down through hymns, carved into scripture, echoed through ritual and myth. But beneath all of it, hidden inside every cell, something else waited. A code, a biological record older than language itself. And when scientists finally learned how to read it, the story changed forever. What they uncovered did not merely revise history, it shattered it. Across laboratories in Delhi, Cambridge, Leipzig, and Boston, geneticists stared at their screens in disbelief. The sequences in front of them did not align with what textbooks had taught for generations. They didn't follow the expected migration paths. They didn't match the dominant theories repeated in classrooms, documentaries, or political narratives. Instead, the DNA pointed somewhere deeper, older, more complex. It suggested that the origins of the Indian people were not the result of a single migration, not a clean lineage descending from one ancestral source. They were the product of layers upon layers of human movement, interaction and survival, stretching back tens of thousands of years. The implications were enormous because if the DNA was right, then one of the world's oldest civilizations was not built upon conquest or replacement, but convergence. Not invasion, but integration. And that challenged everything historians thought they understood. The discovery began quietly, not with a monument or a manuscript, but with a fragment of bone, fragile, unremarkable, and buried for millennia beneath the soil of northern India. It came from a site long known to archaeologists, a place whispered about in academic circles, but never expected to rewrite human history. What that fragment contained would force scientists to confront a truth buried beneath centuries of assumption. And once revealed, there would be no going back. The location was Rocky Garhi, a vast archaeological site in present-day Haryana, once a thriving metropolis of the Indus Valley civilization, older than Egypt's pyramids, older than Mesopotamia's earliest cities. Yet for decades, its people remained faceless, their origins debated but never confirmed. When archaeologists uncovered skeletal remains dating back more than 4,500 years, expectations were cautious. India's climate is notoriously hostile to DNA preservation. Heat, humidity, and microbes usually erase genetic material within centuries. Most believed nothing usable would remain. But this time, against all odds, it did. From a single female skeleton, scientists extracted a complete ancient genome, the first of its kind ever recovered from the subcontinent. And when the sequencing was complete, the results stunned the global scientific community. This woman carried no genetic trace of the steppe pastoralists long believed to be the primary ancestors of modern Indians, no signature of the Indo-European migrations that supposedly reshaped the region around 1500 BCE. Instead, her DNA told a far older story. She shared deep genetic ties with ancient Iranian agriculturalists, but not the later groups associated with conquest or empire and she also carried ancestry linked to indigenous South Asian hunter-gatherers who had lived on the subcontinent for tens of thousands of years. This was not a people replaced by outsiders. This was a civilization born from blending. The implications were explosive. If this woman represented the population of the Indus Valley, then one of the most advanced ancient civilizations on Earth had developed independently of the migrations long thought to define Indian identity. The foundation of Indian civilization was not imported. It was homegrown. And this single genome was only the beginning. As word of the discovery spread, research teams across the world began pooling data. Ancient DNA from Central Asia, the Iranian plateau, and the fringes of South Asia were reanalyzed. New computational models were built. Thousands of genetic simulations were run. 
slowly a clearer picture emerged, and it was far more intricate than anyone expected. Modern Indians, it turns out, descend from at least three deeply ancient populations. The first were the indigenous hunter-gatherers of South Asia, whose lineage stretches back 60,000 years to the earliest human migrations out of Africa. These people adapted to forests, rivers, and monsoons long before agriculture ever existed. The second were early Iranian-related farmers who arrived more than 9,000 years ago. They brought with them agriculture, animal domestication, and new technologies, not through conquest, but through coexistence. They settled, intermarried, and helped give rise to the urban centers of the Indus Valley. The third group arrived much later, pastoralist communities from the Eurasian steppe. Their genetic influence, once thought dominant, turned out to be surprisingly limited and largely male. This detail changed everything. Mitochondrial DNA, passed from mother to child, showed almost no steppe ancestry. That meant these migrations were not mass population replacements. They were small, gradual movements of people integrating into already thriving societies. The narrative of violent invasion began to collapse. What replaced it was something far more complex and far more human. The deeper scientists looked, the clearer the pattern became. Indian civilization was not born from a single origin point, but from layers of interaction spanning thousands of years. The early hunter-gatherers formed the foundation. Their descendants adapted, innovated, and survived changing climates. Then came agriculturalists from the West, bringing crops, tools, and new ways of organizing society. Together, they built cities like Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, urban centers with advanced drainage systems, standardized weights, and planned streets long before similar developments in Europe. These were not conquered societies, they were collaborative ones. Later still, steppe pastoralists arrived, not as armies, but as small groups seeking opportunity. Their languages and rituals merged with existing traditions, giving rise to early Indo-European linguistic roots without erasing what came before. This blending explains a long-standing mystery. Why Indian culture shows continuity rather than rupture? Why religious traditions evolve instead of replacing each other? Why genetic diversity in the subcontinent is among the highest on Earth? India was never a melting pot. It was a mosaic. Every region, every community, every lineage carries fragments of these ancient worlds, layered, preserved, and intertwined. And the DNA proves it. When scientists mapped these genetic threads across modern populations, the results were astonishing. No single group could claim purity. No region stood apart. From the Himalayas to the southern coast, every community bore traces of multiple ancestral streams. The idea of a singular origin dissolved. Instead, identity emerged as accumulation. Centuries of movement, adaptation, and coexistence encoded within the body itself. This also reframed ancient texts and traditions. Myths, once interpreted as symbolic, now appeared as cultural memory, echoes of real migrations, encounters, and integrations preserved through storytelling rather than stone. The genetic data did not contradict history, it completed it. And perhaps most striking of all, the evidence suggested continuity rather than collapse. Civilizations did not vanish and get replaced, they transformed they absorbed, they endured. The woman from Rocky Garhi was not an anomaly. She was a representative, a genetic bridge between past and present, carrying within her the blueprint of modern India. Her DNA told a story of resilience, adaptation, and shared humanity. The revelation reshaped more than academic theory. It reshaped identity itself. India was not built by invaders or defined by purity. It was forged through connection, a living archive of human movement, cooperation, and survival. 
every language spoken, every ritual practiced, every face in the crowd carries echoes of that ancient convergence. The discovery did not diminish history, it enriched it. It showed that civilization does not arise from isolation, but from exchange, that greatness is not inherited from a single ancestor, but constructed through time, diversity, and shared experience. The ancient genome from Rocky Garhi did more than answer a scientific question. It restored a forgotten truth, that humanity's strength has always been its ability to blend, adapt, and evolve together. And as more ancient DNA is uncovered, more stories will surface. Stories buried not in stone or scripture, but in us. History is no longer written only by kings and empires. It is written in our blood. And every strand tells a story still waiting to be heard.